Welcome to the December All Town Case of the Month. Each month, I review a case where All Town helped take better care of patients. As always, email me with any questions or concerns at gzon at iu.edu. This case starts with a 28-year-old female presenting with worsening headache and blurry vision. Symptoms had been ongoing for a few weeks, yet slowly worsening. She had been evaluated with reassuring neurologic imaging during a previous emergency department visit at an outside hospital. After that visit, she was seen by her eye doctor given her vision complaints who told her that the back of her eyes were swollen. Her neurologic exam in the emergency department was reassuring without any focal findings. Given the report of posterior eye abnormality conveyed by the patient, a thalmoscopic examination was attempted. The patient would not tolerate the exam and adequate views were unable to be obtained. Detailed ocular exam didn't detect field deficits and the patient did not have her glasses to confidently assess visual acuity. As I mentioned earlier, the patient had undergone recent reassuring neurologic imaging. Given the limitation of ophthalmoscopic examination, ultrasound was utilized to farther assess the patient. As a reminder, I covered ocular pathology for the January 2020 case, which might provide a helpful review. I will give you a hint that this case represents distinctly different pathology. As I discussed in the January case, ocular ultrasound is an extremely easy exam to perform. The eye is fluid-filled and thus an excellent acoustic medium. Here is the first imaging which was obtained at bedside. If you are familiar with ocular ultrasound, the pathology in this case is quite visible. Yet before we discuss these details, I wanted to include a review slide of ocular anatomy. These two images display pertinent and easily identifiable anatomy of the eye. The cornea, anterior chamber, iris, lens, vitreous chamber, retina, and optic nerve are all readily identifiable during an ocular study. Unlike some ultrasound studies, these images can be obtained with minimal experience and training. Now that ocular anatomy has been reviewed, take another look at the imaging for this patient. Are you able to see the abnormality? Take a closer look at the posterior eye, specifically the retina and the optic nerve. In normal anatomy, the optic disc is barely discernible. For this patient, there is a projection of the optic nerve into the back of the eye consistent with papilledema. The contralateral eye was subsequently examined, again showing concern for papilledema. Given the presenting complaint of headache and blurry vision, along with a report from the eye doctor, there was concern for pseudotumor cerebri. As you likely noticed in the previous clips, in addition to papilledema, the optic nerve appears enlarged as well. Optic nerve sheath diameter has been well described as a way to screen for elevated ICP. Using the common technique of measuring three millimeters back from the retinal surface, the optic nerve sheath was measured bilaterally. A key tip is to measure the entire sheath and not just the optic nerve. Both sides displayed enlargement of the optic nerve sheath to be greater than 6 millimeters, farther offering evidence supporting an elevation in intracranial pressure. To confirm the diagnosis, the patient was consented for lumbar puncture. The diagnosis was confirmed with an opening pressure of 53. Neurology was consulted and Diamox was initiated. I found this case particularly interesting because the patient was being passed around from PCP to the emergency department to optometry without ever receiving a true diagnosis. The patient was only able to report that the back of her eye was swollen. By utilizing ultrasound, we could confirm our suspicion of what this meant. Additionally, it allowed us the information to convince the patient to consent for her lumbar puncture. The first learning point is the concept of utilizing optic nerve sheath diameter to screen for elevated intracranial pressure. This is not a new concept and multiple studies have investigated its utility over the past 10 to 15 years. For example, here's a table from a critical care journal in 2015 reviewing some of the available studies at that time. I subsequently reviewed the following papers in depth which support a sensitivity in the upper 80s to 90s for detection of elevated intracranial pressure. Yet this is not meant to be a literature review and I think utilization of ultrasound for this modality is best summarized by Josh Farkas on Palmcrit. He did a great post covering the topic that can be summed up with this diagram. I like the diagram because it utilizes both findings of papilledema and measurement of optic nerve sheath. Additionally, it addresses the common occurrence of getting a measurement in the 5 to 6 millimeter range. There are obvious limitations and the clinical scenario must be incorporated to make this information useful. No diagnostic study is perfect, including optic nerve sheath diameter. However, I'm a firm believer that additional information is often helpful and can help push us as clinicians to either push the disease process higher or lower on the differential as long as it is utilized in the context of the presenting complaint. Additionally, many clinicians have lost skill with ophthalmoscopic examination and ocular ultrasound is an easy to learn tool to help obtain similar information depending on the suspected disease process. 
Additionally, I wanted to present this case because I have recently seen quite a few similar cases. These cases share a theme of providers suspecting the diagnosis yet referring for workup rather than pursuing a true diagnosis. We are all well equipped in the emergency department to perform appropriate diagnostic imaging and are one of the few specialties left with the skill to perform the lumbar puncture. Deferring the workup often results in months of delay, especially with our patient population. This delay likely increases the possibility of irreversible vision loss. According to the literature, 6 to 24 percent of patients suffer blindness or severe vision loss. The degree of papilledema is thought to represent an independent risk factor for poor outcome, and as I have shown, is something easily identifiable on ultrasound. Thanks for watching. Continue using ultrasound to help take better care of your patients, and as always, email me with any questions or concerns.